I'm Peter Gross from Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. You know, in the 1950s, alligators were on the brink of extinction. They were disappearing quickly as people were collecting their eggs and hunting them for their hides. Now, through captive breeding programs and reintroduction programs, the North American alligator is off the endangered species list. They're back out there in nature in our world's marshes, keeping them clean as they swim through the brackish waterways, keeping the waterways open which become nurseries for literally hundreds of thousands of species of plants and animals. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Throughout the years of filming Wild Kingdom, we were faced with the grim reality of extinction of some animal species. In the 60s and early 70s, Wild Kingdom brought global awareness to the plight of animal species that were near extinction. Families gathered around their televisions with great expectations of worldwide adventures. Wild Kingdom took viewers to the far corners of the world and cultivated an appreciation for animals and their habitats. Marlon and Jim showed us the importance of preserving the natural world, not just for animals, but for our very own quality of life. Wild Kingdom showed generations of people the majesty of our animal ambassadors and helped us to care about them. When you care about something, you become committed to saving it. We made a direct impact on modern captive breeding and release programs, and we've made great strides in preserving wide open spaces where animals can thrive. And we are now seeing a positive comeback from many species. The coexistence between humans and animals was an important topic on many episodes of Wild Kingdom. Marlon and Jim's conservation message greatly inspired me and influenced my career in wildlife education. And I'm not alone. Today we're going to meet some amazing people making a difference and share the story of how they were inspired by Wild Kingdom. So we're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV aren't we? You want to do that? Okay, good. Good. I'll get the popcorn. Yeah. My name is Dr. Becky Brunelli, and I grew up watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Hi, I'm Gabe Kirshner here in California. I'd like to thank Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom for giving me, as a youngster, direction in life. My family and I would gather around every Sunday night. My sister and I would get our pillows and our blankets, and we'd sit in front of the TV, and we would watch the program. And that memory really sticks in my mind. We love to hear stories of boys and girls inspired by Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. As the very first wildlife show on television, Wild Kingdom changed the destiny of kids across the country. Many who grew up to change the destiny of animals around the world. Today, these men and women have contributed to saving dozens of species, like the North American alligator, from the brink of extinction. Gabe Kirshner and Becky Brunelli of Wild Things Incorporated are wildlife experts and conservation ambassadors in Central California who grew up watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. They both credit the show for their passion to care for animals and educate the public on protecting our natural world. I was that kid that was always home late for dinner because I was in the neighborhood pond looking for gopher snakes or garter snakes and it got so bad that my dad would check my hands. I would lie and say I was downstairs doing homework and he would check my hands if they were cold he knew that I was out there um, looking for things in the pond yeah when I was growing up one of the things that influenced me a lot was programs about animals um, like mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom I was never late for dinner on Sundays because I was always home to watch Wild Kingdom that was really what got me excited I'm a snake guy and that came from that episode where Marlon was wrestling the anaconda and it's like that iconic episode Finally, I break his hold. At one time there, I thought he'd crush my leg. Every episode held something for me. Whether it was watching the birds of prey fly or watching the African wildlife, it was what kept me motivated in school, and it's really what shaped my life. 
Gabe and Becky go the extra mile to inspire our next generation by spreading the message far and wide, just as Wild Kingdom did for so many years. I think of the feeling that it gave me, the love of wildlife, uh, being so excited. I can still hear the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom intro. Hello. 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 Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Modern man has awakened to his responsibilities to protect and preserve the rapidly diminishing animal populations of the earth. But much more needs to be done. You as one concerned individual can help. I would like to thank Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom for giving a young kid in Colorado uh, a direction in life. Just creating this passion within um, I was that young kid in Colorado, by the way, that, that watched the programs, fell in love with wild areas, and wild creatures, and gave direction to my life. So much has changed since they were kids. In the 70s, California recorded fewer than 30 bald eagles, our national bird. But today, there are over 370 known pairs across the state, even the grizzly bear. The symbol of our nation's wildlife was once at risk. But thanks to hardworking folks like Gabe and Becky, over 1,200 grizzly bears are thriving in Yellowstone National Park, and the list goes on. When we come back, we'll visit with Gabe and Becky at their wildlife sanctuary, meet the animal ambassadors they share with schools across the country, and learn how you can help protect the wild kingdom. But first, I have a challenge for you. This strange looking lizard found in Arizona and down in New Mexico was almost wiped out. People used to fear it because of its markings. This bright color says, I'm venomous, and it is. Do you have any idea what this venomous lizard might be? Don't go away, we'll be right back on RFD TV. Do you have any idea what this venomous lizard might be? If you guessed Gila Monster, you're right. Go to wildkingdom.com for more animal information. Even with their love for wildlife in Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, it would be a few years before Gabe Kirshner and Becky Brunelli found their path to their lifelong passion for conservation. I was working in the computer industry and I was just feeling like something was kind of missing in my life. So I started doing some research and I found the exotic animal training and management program at Moorpark College. So I decided to drop everything and go to school to learn about being an animal trainer. And then I decided to get a PhD in animal behavior. So then I went to UC Davis and studied primates and specifically primate welfare. While Becky was earning her PhD in animal behavior, Gabe was hard at work designing Wild Things Incorporated, which would be dedicated to providing housing and care for a wide variety of displaced wildlife. Our organization is a fantastic organization that was started in 1987, basically for two reasons. One was to provide a home for animals that needed help, animals that have either been injured and cannot be rehabbed back out in the wild, or wild animals that people have had illegally as pets. There's no greater feeling than to get an animal healthy and to let it go back into a wild area such as this and live out its life as it's truly supposed to. But unfortunately, we're not a rehab center. We're a rescue center sanctuary where we house animals that, for the most part, have been deemed non-returnable to the wild. They're not gonna make it. A bird that has an injury to a wing and can't fly. A mammal that somebody has had too much contact with so it's, it's too imprinted or too bonded with people to stay away from people in the wild. Those are the creatures that we primarily get. Providing a home for those creatures and providing an educational opportunity for kids here in Northern California traveling into school groups, and being able to share wildlife with children. Between the two facilities in California, Gabe and Becky are responsible for over 60 unique species. Here, the animals find a new life with a comfortable home and a chance to inspire children around the country to care about wild animals and the natural world. We have some very, very special animals. To be honest, it's a very special raccoon that can sit in front of an audience of school kids. I always joke that if you can be in front of an audience of school kids, you can do just about anything in life. But we don't push the animals. If the, if the creature is not going to travel to school groups, it just doesn't go. It's just, um, it's their decision. We're in a school every single day of the school year, speaking to large audiences, 
The message is very clear that these animals are not where they belong and they belong in the wild. But I like to get out and teach people about the creatures, build a connection with, that, with those animals so that, that person is more likely to make good choices in the future. This is Ringo, and he is a six-year-old ring-tailed lemur, uh, one of the endangered lemurs of, of Madagascar. Um, amazing animals. This was uh, an illegal pet. Uh, someone tried to keep him as an illegal pet here in California. He was taken away and come back up here, Ringo. Um, he was taken away and sent to us by California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I love sharing him with you and sharing him with school kids, but this guy should be in Madagascar. They have a really cool way of saying hello. And when they get up in the morning, they greet everybody in their entire family. Watch this, this is pretty neat. Ready, Ringo? Pretty neat. They, they, they grunt and then they lick each other in their nose. It's a primitive primate. It's called a prosimate or a pre-primate. This you see that long tail? Long tail used for um, scent marking. They, they run the, their scent glands from their wrists down this tail and they it makes their tail kind of stinky. And then when they're annoyed, they kind of wave their tail and they spread that scent. Amazing adaptation. Becky and Gabe, this is such a wonderful facility you have for wildlife. Up here in the foothills and the mountains, they must feel right at home up here with you. I, I, yeah, I, I hope so. How often when they come in here, how much time do you spend handling them and working with them and feeding them before they can actually go on your educational programs? Oh boy, it's a huge, that runs the whole gamut. Some animals come in and they spend as much time as we possibly can and they never make it to doing our outreach programs. Just their, their personalities or whatnot. And others, um, they, they come in and especially the raptors. It's amazing to me that they'll, they'll adjust so well to sitting on the fist and traveling and being in front of an audience. They, they do very, very well. This is one of the raptors that we get here at our center. This is Archimedes. He's been here over 20 years. He came to us, he has a power line injury. He made a big mistake and flew down and hit a power line and has an injury to his left wing. We talk about that in our programs. That's one of the things that I love to do is to share the animal's personal histories. They're, these are individuals. They're individuals whose lives have been affected and they can no longer live in the wild. And woven in that story is the natural history fact. Within that story, we talk about the silent flight. If we can have him spread his wings and show that, that when he flaps his wings, there's that almost no sound at all. It's whisper quiet. It's, it's very special feathers called cone feathers that muffle the sound, it, it helping him in two ways. One, when he's flying through the forest, he, he can hear, he can actually hear the mice and the rats rustling on the leaves. The second way it helps him is those mice and rats, they don't, they don't hear him coming. You can see why it's so incredibly important to have a healthy owl and raptor, daytime raptor population, keep those rodent populations in check. I mean, we all love rodents too, uh, but you know the nature, of life. The nature is a balance, that's right. Well, he's very serious. And our concern always is, you know, we want to make sure the animals are healthy, happy, and comfortable. So if they're not comfortable with people, then we won't use them in a program. We'll just give them a happy home here. Yeah. So this is TJ. He is a blue and gold macaw, and he came to us uh, from another uh, location. We'd absolutely love to see him in the wild, but because the person that had him before us couldn't have him anymore, we took him and gave him a happy home here. So he came to us with a lot of this vocabulary. Um, they tend to learn a lot of the vocabulary when they're young. Uh, so since he's about 26, 28 years old, he's not learning as much, but he says things like, hola muchacha, and good morning, I love you, can I have a kiss, thank you, and he sings Deo by Harry Belafonte. Well, TJ didn't serenade us today, but thanks to Gabe and Becky, he has plenty of time to learn a whole new playlist. We'll be right back with more great animal stories. But first, you're probably wondering what this strange looking little animal is from Central and South America with that long snout. Spends an awful lot of time on the ground, occasionally goes up in trees looking for grubs, insects and bugs, and even termites. He's omnivorous, spends a lot of time on the ground. Some of you are thinking, oh, maybe it's an anteater. Not an anteater. So don't go away. We'll be right back on RFD TV. You're probably wondering what this strange looking little guy is with a, a very long nose. Some of you are thinking, oh, maybe it's an anteater. Not an anteater. If you guessed Quatamundi, your answer is correct. So go to wildkingdom.com for more animal information. 
Gabe Kirchner and Becky Brunelli at Wild Things Incorporated have dedicated their lives to caring for animals that sadly can no longer return to the wild. But through this program, they now play an important role in teaching children of all ages the importance of conservation. And I notice as we've worked together you know, for years, doing appearances with Mutual of Omaha, spreading the word about conservation, affecting the next generation, and hoping we can set the hook with your amazing animals and they want to become involved in conservation, more and more people are starting to spend more time in the wilderness. It, it's important to get out, get your hands dirty, and, and to see wild things and wild areas. It's therapeutic just to get out into nature and just feel the energy, observe wildlife. The things that we, we see on Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, we see that and we're inspired to go out and observe nature. And you're so right because research has shown that not only do we need to get out physically exercise, mentally it's good for us to spend time in, in the wilderness. So if we can achieve that balance in life, obviously we all have to spend time in front right. of our screens and our computers and, and we have our jobs, but if there's a way to get involved with of hiking and camping and bird watching and spending times out enjoying nature, it gives us that night nice balance. And I think that's what you all are helping to achieve. The spur-thighed tortoise, these guys live with lions and leopards and they survive because of that shell. He's about half grown. He'll get to be twice that size. And this right here is called a gular. And that's his weapon. And this is um, how they flip other tortoises over onto their backs. The females don't have it, just the males. They're just amazing animals. He's gonna make a break. Go. This is a smaller anaconda. This is a prehistoric snake that hunts in the water. It's beautifully camouflaged for its wetlands life. Obviously, this is something that should be in the Amazon. It's so beautiful. And that's what we tell people when they have a fear of snakes or spiders or you know something that has a reputation of being scary or creepy. We tell them, try to get past that part and appreciate the amazing skill that this animal has in moving or a spider when it builds its web, the engineering and the artistry. Helping to overcome fear of the wild is a big part of Gabe and Becky's mission, just as it was for Marlon Perkins on Wild Kingdom. Fear of predatory animals almost eliminated the North American gray wolf, but have since become a tremendous success story. But some folks are not just afraid of lions and tigers and bears. Even the very little critters you find in your own backyard can seem intimidating, but all contribute to keeping the balance of nature. Arachnophobia is actually a fairly common phobia, and actually they do play an important role. Looking for as many small insects, small lizards, small mice, anything small that could be harmful. If you're stung by a large spider like this, it's sort of like a bee sting. As long as you're not allergic to bees, it's fine. It's the small spiders, like the black widow or the brown recluse, that we need to worry about. This one, even though they're strange looking and they're scary and there's lots of tales about how dangerous they can be, they're helpful to have sharing our planet with us. Seeing that kid in the front row's eyes just come alive when they see a barn owl for the first time up close or they see the big python, you just recognize there's an excitement there. And that's really, I came at this from an animal background. I came at this because I wanted to work hands on with wildlife. But really now that's my focus is seeing those kids' lives change and, and um, changing their attitudes about the natural world. Mm -hmm. And we disseminate the facts about what it's like to be in the wild, where for a while it was teeth and claws and razor sharp teeth and sharks are out there, marauders in the ocean. I know young people that won't swim in the ocean. Yeah. People are afraid to camp because they're afraid of the bears. Well, bears are afraid of people in most cases, unless you have food with you that you need to hang in a tree. So, so much of what you do is doing so much good in terms of physical and mental health for the next generation. I, uh, I salute both of you. Well, thank you. That's one of the coolest things ever was said to me. I was in a sandwich shop and the gentleman said, I remember you. You brought animals to my school when I was in elementary school. And I said, where are you now? He said, well, I'm going into the Peace Corps. And it's probably because of you that I'm, I'm doing And that was like, it's, it's a big ego thing. And I don't mean to throw it out there as such, but that's yeah. just, that's what it's all about for me. So. Mm -hmm. When you reach a student or, a, you know, any, any kids of all ages, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then later they come back to you or they send you an article or they share a picture of something they saw in nature, they send that to you later, you know you had a real lasting effect sure, on their sure. love of nature. I remember when uh, Jim Fallon and I were uh, filming in Alaska, in the Alaska Range, 
and we were talking about the migration of a hundred thousand caribou that go through there every year. And there was a field researcher there who lives in his tent months out of the year in the mosquitoes and the snow and the areas in Alaska. And he'd come in um, where we were staying to have a little bite to eat. And he recognized Jim Fowler in his Mutual of Omaha logo and his jacket. And he ran over and he said, you're the reason I'm in this business. <laughs> You're the reason I live in a tent. Yeah, and I live in a tent and eat freeze-dried food. But it was uh, such a rewarding place to be at the time, yeah. As Gabe and Becky and their menagerie of rescued animals tour the country to educate people on the importance of preserving our wildlife, they will never forget the incredible impact Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom had on their lives. What I do in building connection between students and the natural world, that's what Wild Kingdom's effect was on me. Just like I speak about showing kids that there's more out there than your city block or your job, Wild Kingdom taught that to me. You know, our natural world is really in peril right now. There are so many issues that we as humans need to address. We are the cause of many issues, but we can also be the solution to help wildlife, help our wild spaces, you know, because it's not just the animals, it's their environment that they're in. Wild creatures do need our help. There are a lot of challenges facing our planet today and um, people have to get involved. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not something that we need to panic about but we do need to get involved. You can do small things just like cleaning up your environment or spreading the word about um, animals that you care about. Let's recycle. Let's not waste water. Let's not use single-use plastics. There's a wild area out there too on this planet that um, we should be aware of and we should be doing everything we can to protect. Watching programs like Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and learning more about animals because that really gives you a respect for our wild spaces and our wildlife. Now as a wildlife lecturer and director of a rescue center for animals, I think Wild Kingdom was instrumental. It created a, a real respect. I think respect is an important component of that. It's not, not fear, but respect. I mean, we should still respect sharks, but it's alleviated a lot of the misinformation and misunderstanding and replaced it with true information, and that's the key. Also, it's very exciting that now, later in life, I get a chance to work with Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I just want to thank you for laying the foundation for me, for my love of animals, my love of wildlife, and encouraging that love and passion to help preserve our wild spaces and educate others about wildlife. Thank you so much. There are so many great wildlife success stories, and each day we make great strides towards protecting our kingdom. There's still work to be done, but thanks to awareness and efforts and conservation programs nationwide, we have more people than ever before chipping in. And that's good news for our wild kingdom. Were you or someone you know inspired by Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom? We would love to hear your story maybe even feature you on the show. Visit us at wildkingdom.com to submit your personal story of how you were inspired by Wild Kingdom. Thanks for watching, and remember, from the Wild Kingdom to your own kingdom, Mutual of Omaha helps protect what matters most to you. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.